Hello, you're watching Sideline on MNB World, an interview program that invites various guests for a conversation on important theme. And today in our studio, we have UNDP Deputy Regional Director for Asia and Pacific, Christophe Baye. Hello, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me with, uh, in your program, Sideline. Very happy to be here during my visit to Mongolia. Mr. Christophe Bowe has been appointed as UNDP Deputy Regional Director for Asia and the Pacific from October 1st of 2020. From January 2019, he has been UNDP Resident Representative in Indonesia and Country Director in the same country between 2015 and 2018. His early assignments with UNDP included China, Vietnam, Ghana, Uzbekistan and Ukraine. Mr. Bawe also worked in UNDP headquarters in New York, in the Evaluation Office and then in the Partnership Bureau prior to joining UNDP. He was posted in the French Embassy in Yugoslavia. Mr. Bawe holds a master's degree with honors from the Institut d'Etudes Politiques de Paris, a diploma in Southeast Asian Studies from the National Institute of Oriental Languages and Civilizations in Paris, a law degree and a degree in Slavic Languages from the University of Bordeaux. Let's start our interview from your current working visit to Mongolia. Uh, what is the main purpose of the visit and what outcomes do you expect from this working visit? Well, first, you know, it is since I took my, my position as uh, Deputy Regional Director for Asia Pacific, this trip is one of my very first trips, so I'm very happy that mm -hmm. Mongolia is among the first countries I, I visit. The objective is actually very simple. First, it is to discuss with all partners, mm -hmm. Mongolian partners, the cooperation between UNDP and Mongolia, and it's actually <coughs> a very good, you know, very close uh, cooperation, but I think the objective is to see how we can develop it further. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, the topic I've had of my discussion with government and national mm -hmm. counterparts. It's also to uh, interact with mm -hmm. uh, our UNDP office in Ulaanbaatar, mm -hmm. the UNDP Mongolia office, mm -hmm. a very dynamic uh, team, very committed to Mongolia development, to, to exchange with them. And I think also both professionally and personally, it is for me to know an opportunity to understand better Mongolia. The development context of Mongolia, obviously, but also the history um, of Mongolia, the richness of, uh, of the country, uh, its uh, uh, countryside as well, because in addition to Ulaanbaatar, I went to the Harkangai province. Mm -hmm. So this is also, you know, for me, a very important objective, better understand, better know Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And I'm enjoying it a lot. And talking about the regional development, how important is the collaboration between the stakeholders when it comes to uh, boosting SDG goals, uh, implementation of the SDG goals in the region? It's crucial. Mm -hmm. I mean, partnership working with stakeholders is a condition to make progress to achieve the SDGs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we have to realize that because of COVID-19 pandemic, mm -hmm. because of economic shocks that have actually hit the countries globally, but partly in Asia Pacific, including Mongolia, mm -hmm. we've actually reversed the progress in human development and the sustainable development goals. So mm -hmm. what we need to do now so with the engagement of the stakeholders is bring back the sustainable development goals, mm -hmm. the SDG on track. Mm -hmm. and, um, and actually SDG number 17 is about partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, so it shows that partnership is at the core of the development. Mm -hmm. And it is important also to be very inclusive in the partnership. Mm -hmm. So it's partnership, you know, for the United Nations, it's a whole UN United Nations development system, mm -hmm. UNDP and other agencies. It's also partnership with the host government, mm -hmm. obviously partnership with the civil society mm -hmm. uh, which are playing a very active role important role in the mm -hmm. development of the economy of society so private sector the mm -hmm. private sector has to be seen like a development actor i uh, mm -hmm. just had a discussion with private sector representatives mm -hmm. and it was good to see them engage for the sdgs mm -hmm. uh, and also the international community we have mm -hmm. here in ulaanbaatar a number of development partners that are also part of the joint efforts working with undp and others mm -hmm. for the national development for the mm -hmm. sdgs mm -hmm. so partnership absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. Lately, the climate change is becoming a huge issue worldwide, including Mongolia, where the desertification, rangeland degradation, and uh, what kind of measures the government of Mongolia should take in order to tackle these uh, climate change related issues? No, you're very right that mm -hmm. climate, is an, climate change is an emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see it, you know, across Asia Pacific, there is not a single day where we don't see 
uh, a manifestation, mm -hmm. uh, a, you know, a sign of climate change. Mm -hmm. um, and that unfortunately includes Mongolia. And uh, when I was in the, in the countryside talking to the local people, the community, mm -hmm. the herders, they tell you, you know, how much climate change is already affecting their mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. So we need to act, and I think for Asia Pacific, in, including Mongolia, it's about working on adaptation. Mm -hmm. uh, adaptation to climate change is important. Mm -hmm. There is no choice. So mm -hmm. it's about, uh, for instance, best agricultural practices, mm -hmm. um, trying to avoid overgrazing mm -hmm. in the case of Mongolia, protecting the, uh, protecting the, you know, the water mm -hmm. uh, sources so we can mitigate the impact of the drought that affects mm -hmm. the herders. So there is a whole adaptation and I'm very happy that uh, UNDP in Mongolia has actually a whole portfolio of mm -hmm. uh, uh, climate adaptation uh, projects that we're implementing in different provinces of the country. So adaptation is one, but mitigation is the, uh, is the uh, second one. A uh, number of Asian countries are actually contributing to emissions, mm -hmm. uh, CO2 emissions and uh, that calls for an energy transition. Mm -hmm. We need to see a much faster, uh, much larger energy transition mm -hmm. in Asia Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, and for Mongolia, uh, there is uh, a coal-based energy system and mm -hmm. that means, you know, transition away from coal to a clean energy, uh, including renewable energy. Now, that's not an easy journey to take, mm -hmm. uh, but it's absolutely essential. Uh, and I think UNDP together with other international national partners very strongly engage in you know, this uh, energy transition. We call it just mm -hmm. energy transition because it has to include all dimensions, mm -hmm. all parts of the society. Mm -hmm. But it's absolutely essential if you want to, you know, address or minimize at least the impact of climate change to do this mm -hmm. energy transition mm -hmm. in Mongolia and in Asia more broadly. Mm -hmm. Talking about the energy transition, what kind of solutions will be better to adopt? Mm -hmm. So I think renewable energy is part of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there are some um, coal related solution, clean mm -hmm. coal. I think there are technology that allows so you mm -hmm. don't see the black smoke mm -hmm. uh, or less of it. You don't, you know, smell the bad smell. Yes, but smoke. I think renewable energy is absolutely essential. Now, uh, Mongolia has committed to have 30 percent of its energy production being renewable by 2030. Mm -hmm. So that leaves us seven, uh, seven years. Uh, and you have a potential in Mongolia. Uh, mm -hmm. Renewable energy, uh, solar energy mm -hmm. is definitely one of them. Wind energy. Mm -hmm. And I saw some wind energy, you know, mm -hmm. renewable energy in the, in the countryside. So we need to develop this. Uh, but it's not a purely climate concern. It's also important to underscore that there is now a strong economic case for renewable energy. Mm -hmm. It has become much cheaper. Mm -hmm. So economically, it is actually a worthwhile investment. Mm -hmm. And it also generates what we call green jobs. So, mm -hmm. you know, job creation, uh, employment promotion, mm -hmm. I know is very important in Mongolia. And we have to look at the renewable energy sector like one that can actually create jobs mm -hmm. and that makes the case even stronger for renewable mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. Continue on talking about the renewable energy. How is the situation for example in Asian Pacific region? So in Asia Pacific it is, you know, to be honest, I think we are lagging behind in terms of energy transition. Mm -hmm. We have too many countries countries in mm -hmm. the region that have actually uh, slowed down on their energy transition, reduction mm -hmm. of emission, either through coal or deforestation. Mm -hmm. So we have you know, to engage with them. Now we have what we call the nationally, nationally determined contribution, NDCs, mm -hmm. which come from the Paris Agreement. Mm -hmm. And we've seen recently uh, you know, a higher level of ambition from the countries mm -hmm. in terms of uh, you know, NDCs and mm -hmm. emissions. So now we need to have the policies in place. Mm -hmm. We need to have the um, enforcement of these policies, the national mm -hmm. strategy being implemented. We need to have the technology and we need to have the funding. And mm -hmm. quite a number of UNDP projects are actually accessing global funding Mm -hmm. bringing it to the countries in Asia so we can actually catch up, if you like, mm -hmm. on this transition. Mm -hmm. But it requires political will, it requires uh, engagement of private sector, so it's a whole of society. Mm -hmm. It brings us back to the issue of partnership and stakeholders. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Uh, when we talk about the activities of the United Nations, we cannot leave the goal, SDG goal number five, gender equality. And in terms of gender equality, what measures uh, Mongolia should adopt in order to increase the number of women who are in uh, decision-making positions? Mm. Well, first of all, thank you for mentioning gender and mm -hmm. SDG number five. Absolutely essential and I think UNDP, like the rest of the United Nations, we are extremely committed to gender, gender empowerment, women empowerment, gender equality. Mm -hmm. 
Now, it is, it is a challenge in a number of countries in Asia okay. and the Pacific. We have to recognize this. And we have to say also it's a challenge of, uh, you know, in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. Also, we see, you know, a number of very engaged Mongolian mm -hmm. women. If you look at the uh, uh, data, the mm -hmm. statistics, you see, for instance, the gender equality index of Mongolia is below the regional average. Mm -hmm. So we need to address it. Now, there are several dimensions. One is political representation. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to have women. You have a number of women ministers, yes. and I met some mm -hmm. of them, but you need to have women in government. You need mm -hmm. to have, you know, some countries have gender parity in government. Mm -hmm. You need more women in the National Assembly, in the parliament. The mm -hmm. number is, I think, is about 13 or 17, so it's a fairly low mm -hmm. number. You need also to have women in, uh, at the subnational, provincial, mm -hmm. district level. So it's about women representation, mm -hmm. you know, women to represent the interest of the, of the citizens. So that is one. You need also to have women in the economics uh, sphere. Uh, you have in Mongolia a number of CEOs in the banking mm -hmm. world, women, but we need more on, the, on them. Mm -hmm. So uh, representation, political and economic representation of women is important. We also need to mention gender-based violence, mm -hmm. which is an issue, and I think probably COVID-19 has made the uh, situation even More worse, so yeah. we need to address mm -hmm. it. Um, and it's fundamentally also a question of awareness of, you know, of uh, stereotype being actually, you know, um, defeated. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, it's, it's also sometimes very much a cultural issue. We will see in a number of countries. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can see that in social media. Mm -hmm. Dismissive comments against women, which mm -hmm. is absolutely unacceptable. So mm -hmm. it's about respect. It's about tolerance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about, you know, the whole society, women and men, mm -hmm. you know, men should also be gender champions mm -hmm. uh, to address this issue. But it's, it's a, an important one. And we have to remember also that, you know, women are an essential contributor to the socioeconomic mm -hmm. development of a country. So if you don't have gender equality, if you don't have gender representation, you're basically losing opportunities. Mm -hmm. And Mongolia, just like not other, other countries, should not lose opportunities mm -hmm. and make women, you know, equal. Mm -hmm. uh, returning back to our question about the gender equality, yeah. compared to other Asian countries, uh, if we compare Mongolia and the other Southeast Asian or Asia Pacific countries, what is the sta status of Mongolia? Well, as I mentioned, that if I take one reference, the gender mm -hmm. equality index, mm -hmm. Mongolia is below average. Mm -hmm. So we need, you know, that's all the dimension of representation, economic mm -hmm. empowerment that I, mm -hmm. I mentioned. But again, you have, you know, very good examples of, you know, Mongolian women uh, uh, ascending to position, contributing mm -hmm. to the economic, social development, the political life. We just need more of them. And we mm -hmm. need a whole of society commitment to the gender equality. Mm -hmm. That's really what UNDP is advocating mm -hmm. uh, with our partners. And I hope to see more progress. So we want to see Mongolia raising and now mm -hmm. being above the regional average. I think mm -hmm. that's you know, the first objective we should have. Among the Asian Pacific countries, if we compare uh, which country is the most uh, developing in terms of gender equality in Asia? Mm. Well, it's, I mean, it's very difficult to, uh, to say, but I would say in Southeast Asia, I think uh, Vietnam is one country because mm -hmm. I serve there where I see mm -hmm. really, you know, a strong commitment to gender mm -hmm. uh, equality. Um, there are other, um, other dimensions, other, other country where we can have that. Um, I think, um, you know, Thailand, the country where I'm based, the office is, mm -hmm. is, is, you know, has some also good gender results. Um, but let's not look at other countries. Let's look at Mongolia now. Mm -hmm. What are the issues? What do we need to do? Mm -hmm. uh, what, you know, what are the kind of objective that we have? We had a very interesting, you know, development recently mm -hmm. with uh, political parties and mm -hmm. a UNDP project. Uh, supported by, uh, by the Korean uh, International Cooperation Agency, COICA, um, political party making a pledge mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, to women uh, and, uh, and to gender equality. To provide so, them like quota. Yeah. So that's, that's what we need. Mm -hmm. So no, let's look inside. What are the issues in Mongolia? Let's have a dialogue with mm -hmm. the government, with civil society organization, with women mm -hmm. association, and try to see how we can then, you know, we'll look at the other country, but let's mm -hmm. look, focus on Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we can find some good solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, we will continue talking about the regional development. Yeah. And what is the role, for your opinion, what is the role of innovation and technology in boosting the regional development in Asia Pacific? Mm -hmm. Essential, but Essential. much more can be mm -hmm. done. Um, you know, the um, Asia Pacific countries are actually, you know, quite dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, in economic growth, the society, the entrepreneurship is there. Mm -hmm. So innovation is absolutely central. Now, 
for UNDP, we've made actually innovation a central part of our program. Yeah. Uh, so it's not for us, uh, you know, a buzzword. It's actually when we work on governance, when mm -hmm. we work in climate, we try to see the innovation part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we have, a, for instance, an accelerator lab which explores solutions. We try mm -hmm. to find new approaches. So mm -hmm. innovation is central. It needs to be also reflected in the national policies. Mm -hmm. And I think in Mongolia you have receptiveness mm -hmm. to innovation. It includes digital. Mm -hmm. uh, digitalization has, you know, a huge potential and I think we saw that with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that, you know, uh, e-education or distance uh, mm -hmm. healthcare online can actually bring mm -hmm. a lot of benefit. But also in the economic sphere, mm -hmm. you know, developing cashless payment, mm -hmm. inclusive financing. So all this is, you know, about digital, about technology, mm -hmm. uh, but also about ha having an innovative mindset. Mm -hmm. And I'm struck, you know, working uh, in uh, different countries in the Asia Pacific that uh, the society is very dynamic, including the young people. Mm -hmm. You know, the energy, the power of the young people for innovation is absolutely astounding. Mm -hmm. We have what we call the Youth Collab, which is supporting youth entrepreneurs mm -hmm. for innovative ideas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's amazing how many innovative ideas mm -hmm. come, not only from people from the capital. Young people in villages, remote areas have come up with ideas that we have supported mm -hmm. as UNDP. So really make innovation a central part of, uh, of development, mm -hmm. because that's how we prepare for the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, my last question will be, what are the challenges and opportunities that Mongolia and the Asia Pacific region face when they want to achieve the SDG goals? So um, challenges, I would say, is to resume economic growth at a significant mm -hmm. pace because we had a slowdown mm -hmm. uh, with COVID and we still have the impact of the, of the, of the crisis Lockdown, and of conflicts. Yeah. Of mm -hmm. the, um, Russian invasion of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So we need to resume economic growth, mm -hmm. um, but we need to have an inclusive growth. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you look at the, you know, uh, Asia, inequalities are very high in mm -hmm. Asia. So you need to combine um, economic growth with um, more equality. Mm -hmm. You need to reduce the inequality. So that's one of the main challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I think also we need to uh, find ways as we discussed to address the climate, mm -hmm. uh, the climate issues. Mm -hmm. uh, there won't be any sustainable future for Asia Pacific mm -hmm. for the health if we don't f address the climate issue in an mm -hmm. effective way. Okay. Um, and I think also we need to continue to build, you know, strong governance institution, foster the trust of the citizens in institutions. Mm -hmm. That's goal number 16. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely important to have accountable uh, institution because, you know, governance mm -hmm. permeates all dimensions of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of the development uh, and uh, of, of a country. Mm -hmm. um, there are opportunities. There is a huge potential, mm -hmm. uh, economic potential, but also potential in the society. Uh, we talked again about innovation. There is financing mm -hmm. in, uh, in Asia uh, region. Mm -hmm. Financing not, um, I'm not talking about official development assistance mm -hmm. from the donors. I'm talking about financing from public sources. Mm -hmm domestic mm -hmm. um, government budget allocated for SDGs, mm -hmm. but also private flow. And I think a whole line of uh, work of UNDP is actually unblocking mm -hmm. financing, uh, mm -hmm. for instance, green finance, social mm -hmm. impact investment, so it goes to the SDG. So that's a huge potential because you have financial resources in Asia. And if we're able to channel these uh, resources to SDGs, have the right institution, have the right policies, mm -hmm. I'm really hopeful that you know we can uh, resume and actually accelerate catch up mm -hmm. on the SDG in Asia, but including in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for providing updates on UNDP activities and operations. Thank you for hosting me. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the new episode of Sideline. And today in our studio, we had UNDP uh, Deputy Regional Director for Asia and Pacific, Mr. Christophe Bawe. We'll see you next time with more stories and updates. Have a nice evening. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.